I'm Rebecca Larson, and welcome to History Lair. Henry VIII, the most well-known monarch in English history. A Renaissance king who ruled England for nearly 38 years, and is most well-known for instilling terror in those around him, as well as beheading two of his wives. In this installment, we look at a different side of the infamous monarch. Born at Greenwich Palace on the 28th of June, 1491, Henry Tudor was the third child and second son of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. His parents' marriage put an end to decades of fighting between the Yorks and the Lancasters, both houses under the Plantagenets, and what we know today as the Wars of the Roses. Henry's childhood had been idyllic, but not without drama. His elder brother died young and his mother followed soon after. It is what happened when Henry became king that we are all still discussing centuries later. But what was the legacy of this often said tyrant king? At Richmond Palace on the 21st of April, 1509, King Henry VII died. His son, who was nearly 18 years old, was now king of England. When he came to the throne, Henry VIII was described as exceptionally tall, well-proportioned, had the features of a Greek god, and moved gracefully. His complexion was fair. He had auburn hair and a rounded face, with the features so delicately formed that they, quote, would become a pretty woman, end quote. This new, young king naturally commanded attention and authority by appearance alone. It was the coronation that set the tone for Henry's reign. It was the beginning of the Renaissance period in England. It had also been a long time since a king came to the throne in England with such approval and adoration. It was a new era, one of education, music, jousting, and overall fun. The court was full of young people, which was the opposite of the reign of his father. Henry was eager to open his father's coffers, which were overflowing, to celebrate his new role. The mood at Tudor court had altered drastically since the changing of the guard. Now there was laughter in the corridors at court and continuous festivals to enjoy. Under the new administration, both highborn and lowborn men had the same opportunities. While Henry understood the importance of having men of noble birth and experience in key positions, he also appreciated men of ambition, like Thomas Wolsey, a man who would soon become pseudo-king. Henry VIII was a great lover of music. He had been described as having a great singing voice, as well as being a good composer. During his summer progress of 1510, Henry entertained himself, and presumably others, by playing the flute, recorder, and virginals. While some believe the king wrote green sleeves, there's no definitive evidence to confirm. However, we do know that he wrote Pastime with Good Company. Take a listen. Pastime with good company, I love and shall until I die. Through true last but none deny, so God be pleased, thus live will I. For my past dance and sing and dance. Henry was a true Renaissance man. He enjoyed the arts and set out to attract as many artists and musicians from abroad that he could. A Florentine sculptor was one of the first to arrive. He was commissioned by Henry to execute the tomb of his father at Westminster Abbey. But no artist is better known than Hans Holbein the Younger. Holbein is responsible for giving the Tudor court a face, completing portraits for those such as Thomas More, Queen Jane Seymour, and Thomas Howard, 3rd Duke of Norfolk. 
Holbein was a highly versatile and technically accomplished artist who not only painted portraits, but also designed jewelry and metalwork. During the reign of Henry VIII, the king was responsible for establishing the Royal Navy. He encouraged both shipbuilding and the dockyards. His father had started building warships, but had only completed five by the time of his death in 1509. Henry, on the other hand, had built 47 ships during his 38-year reign, as well as another 35 which had been acquired by purchase or gained as prizes. Two of the most well-known warships of his time were the Mary Rose and the Great Harry. There were many others, including, but not limited to, the Mary Imperial, the Falcon and the Fetterlock, Port Cullis, and Peter Pomegranate in honor of the Yorkists, Beaufort, and the Badges of Aragon. Henry was quite the builder as well, considered the most prolific builder of the Tudor dynasty. He does compare to the most prolific English monarch, King Edward I. The only difference between the two men was that Henry's building was done quickly, often making the men work overnight by candlelight and fires. And so, because of this, many of his buildings no longer stand today. He was the head of the Church of England, a Renaissance man, a good jouster. He increased the Royal Navy, a prolific builder. He helped to create the Tudor dynasty as we know it today. His name? Henry VIII.